Unsyndicated presents. With Sean Belegian. So I was in a bad mood for most of the game. I'm not gonna lie to you. I was I was in a bad mood. I sent out a tweet. Um I'll introduce Blake and his friend in just a second. <laughs> And then I forgot, like, to practice what I preach. Because, Blake, I was I was goo-goo baby, okay, during the game. Aww. And you believe the Lions got there. They missed the opportunity. They would have played so much better than Frisco did. <laughs> listen, listen. I forgot rule number one. And you know what rule number one is. And it's funny because we, you and I were talking just before we came on. I actually had a couple of my friends like hit me up and go, oh, wow, dude, you called it. I don't deserve any credit for that. It, Blake, no offense. You don't deserve any credit for that. Okay. No. It's Patrick Mahomes. That's it. He's final. Like, he's final. I like that. I like that a lot. That's what you said to me. He's one of one. He's in a league by himself. There is Patrick Mahomes and everybody else right now. You can hate him. You can be sick and tired of him. All that sh crap. Really, you can. Shit. You can, all that, all of it, okay? You can be sick of it until you are blue in the face. He is one of one. Yes. He's one of one. That's it. Okay. Yep. So, hey. Hey. Great chat with you guys. We'll talk football again next year. No, we're we're here for a while. How you doing, uh, Blake? Of course, alongside he'll introduce his friend in a moment. Uh, somebody ring the bell, Blake. Of course, uh, from the Mitch Album Show and Sports Rap on Seven Sixty WJR. How are you, Blake? I am fantastic. Uh, this is my friend. For those of you who missed the pregame show, this is my friend, formerly known as Brady. Now he is Mahomes. That's the, like, he's 28 years old, guys. 28 years old. Mahomes just won his third. With that All drive. Right. So, um, I'm going to, here's the old practice, what I preach, Blake. I think one of the dumbest things that has happened in sports over the last 10 years is when people talk about legacy. I'm, I'm going to repeat it. Okay. Mm -hmm. How many, how many times has ESPN said, what does this win or loss do for LeBron's legacy? I, I mean, it's, it's one of the worst bits in the history of mankind. And, and it, it kind of fell into the NFL as well. If you recall about Tom Brady and, and it was mm -hmm. so stupid I, I, there, I cannot talk about, and I will not talk about Patrick Mahomes' legacy. I, I cannot and I will not. But what we can talk about is past tense events. And based on what you just said and what he's done so far, okay, this guy is, is on pace to being historic. Period. Yes. End of story. And, and I was one of those guys, Blake. See, your generation is a little different than mine, okay? I, I, no matter what anybody said, Joe Montana was the best quarterback I ever saw. And then I got to the point, and I remember exactly when it happened. I was at Fox 2, and Dan Miller and I were doing the po the post-game show when they came roaring back against Atlanta. And I literally that night I said, okay, now I'm just being an old guy. If I contend that Joe Montana yes. is the best now. And I like, I refuse. I, I, I have no choice becoming an old guy, but I refuse to think like an old guy. Okay. Because old guys dig in their heels and play the, the time honored. You never saw that guy play. I was being what I detest. Mm -hmm. So I, I morphed to Tom Brady and, and I'm not ready to declare Patrick Mahomes goat yet okay but dude he's in a league by himself period end of story it can't be argued anymore like and that game and we're gonna go over it in detail obviously the first half wasn't great the first three quarters were 
sloppy and slow, everything, whatever. But at the end of the day, who came through? It was Patrick Mahomes. And Brock Purdy played a great game. He was not shaky I, at all. I, I didn't get glad, one shaky text. I am glad that you brought that up because I wanted to publicly say that to your lover, that Brock, I was wrong about you. And you know what? I The kid's a gamer. Seriously. Yeah. He is. He's a gamer. He, he's, yeah. he's a gamer. You know, I'm not I'm not putting him on a pedestal or anything, but the kid's a gamer. Uh, you don't you don't mind having a quarterback like that. How is that? I don't think that I could make the argument San Fran did not lose that game. The Chiefs won that game. Yep. That's and I just... wouldn't argue with you. I wouldn't argue with you. No. I like what a couple guys said. Um uh, somebody said, sounds like Tiger Woods. I had a really big argument with somebody many years ago about Tiger Woods. Somebody in the media, I'm not going to bring it up, but uh, we had a very big argument about Tiger Woods. And it was funny because I think what the Tiger Woods crowd did, whether they want to admit it or not, is inconsequential, is they they move the goalpost in regards to the argument. If you remember, and th- these were Tiger Woods' own words, and, and there's nothing like when you're having an argument with somebody, Blake, using their own words against them. Tiger Woods wanted to be measured by the majors, right? Mm-hmm. That was his quote, all right? And and for a while there, it looked like Tiger was was not only going to catch Jack, but he was going to blow past him. And that's why I caution people all the time. Slow down, pump the brakes a little bit. Let's wait for the career to finish. There were so many people that were calling Tiger Woods the greatest golfer of all time 15 years ago. Now a little bit old, over, over that. And then obviously we know that a whole slew of things happened. A lot of it he brought upon himself. And, and I think if you're one of those people that you want to argue that Tiger Woods is the greatest golfer of all time today, you're kind of being that guy, you know, that guy that I was talking about that now nah, you just, you want to be right. You want to dig your heels in and I'll use Tiger's own words. You're judged by your majors. He didn't catch Jack period. End of story. Thanks for playing. Jack holds the title, right? But my gosh, Blake, when you look at it and I know you were a little kid, it looked like he was going to blow past Jack Nicholas. Yeah. You know the, uh, the 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 tiger the tiger cycle all you know all of it. And that's why I caution people, let's not go to and I don't believe for a second that you think he's the greatest of all time. I'm I know No, no, that. it's a great bit you know, though. <laughs> it is a great bit. But um I I'm glad that a couple people brought that up. It it kind of reminds me of the Tiger Woods things. Okay, Andy Reid retires. Is does that take away from Mahomes' greatness? All of a sudden, you know, you're out of that system, et cetera, et cetera. There are so many different things that can happen. But today, we have to celebrate him as he's he's the man. But you already knew it. We all already yeah. knew it. He's the man. Yeah, but it was it was also how it happened. Like that last drive, that last drive in OT was Patrick Mahomes. Yep. It was yep. It was perfect. And we even saw some early Patrick Mahomes early in the game, like with that deep throw, and he was taking shots and being aggressive. Like that game was that was Patrick Mahomes and he is final. What did um, you think the game though, the first half? Because I saw everyone complaining, oh, this is terrible offense. I thought it was just great defense on both sides, personally. I thought it was boring. I, yeah. I I thought I thought it was boring. Um, yeah, I, it wasn't. As I said, I that was when I was in my um, goo goo baby stage two, where where mm-hmm. I sat back and said, "The Lions would have twenty four points by now, and then they'd miss two field goals or miss going and kicking two field goals, but they'd still be up twenty four to seven and all that." Um, I, I I'm not gonna lie to you. I thought it was boring. I it wasn't. You know, it wasn't like I was watching. Uh, the 2000 Baltimore Ravens or the 85 Bears. You know what I mean? It, it wasn't yeah. like that, wow, awe-inspiring defensive performance, if that makes sense. I, I did. I'm not going to lie to you. I thought it was boring. I just I thought like both defenses 
knew what both offenses wanted to do, and they were scripting their defense really, really well. Yeah. By the way, um, at some point in time, and I'm not saying it's going to happen today, maybe it happens tomorrow, maybe it happens the day after, but at some point this week, I think that multiple Chiefs have to grab Valdez Scantling and just beat the sin out of him. Just, I, I, you know, for all the sins that he made here, <laughs> what the hell are you doing in overtime in the Super Bowl, man? Like, yeah. what are you doing? You know, if, if, earlier in the year, it was the drops. And then, you know, give him credit. He made the big play when he had to last week and everything. But, like, like Blake, when that happened, it's like, dude, are you serious? Take the plus six. Take the oh. plus six. It's overtime, you moron. Breaking news. Yeah. Uh, shocker on who's MVP. I'll just let you guess. You have one Wow, guess. is it Harrison Butker? <laughs> it could have been. It's Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. He's he's really, really good at football. I'm not. I'm I not feel so good. bad for Dre Greenlaw, too. Oh, There is Achilles on a celebration. Dude. Like. Dude. Come on. A uh, couple comments, my buddy Joe in Windsor. Uh, how did that work out for Tiger? Waffle House takes no prisoners. Uh, <laughs> Steve said Brady didn't prove he was the greatest till Tampa. That made him goaded. Uh, for me, it was the Atlanta game. It was twenty-eight three. Yeah, it was. That was that was it. Was that was it? I I couldn't like. I'm not joking. It was like an epiphany. I was sitting there watching the game with Dan and. I started to go into my Joe Montana's the best routine. And I was like, wait a second. I'm like, I'm my dad because that's a funny thing about generations, right? Generations love to say that the guy that we saw is the best of all time. Okay. And, and I'm guilty of it in a certain regard in a few sports. I am. I, I, that nobody will ever tell me that there was a better player than Wayne Gretzky. Nobody will ever tell me there was a more talented player than Mario Lemieux. I won't hear it. MJ, LeBron, I'll take Michael Jordan all day. So I'm guilty of it, okay? But like my, you know, my dad was one of those guys. You never saw Jim Brown run. You never see, saw Gail Sayers run. I don't need to, Pops. I saw Barry Sanders run. I'm yeah. cool, thanks, you know? Yeah, no, I, I mean, Brady, obviously, like for me, this is, and you probably have the same experience because you came up seeing Montana do what he did. And that went right into Brady. I hated Montana. I hated him. And that, I went from Brady right into this. Yeah. Like, he's insane. I love what Mike said. By the way, if you haven't checked out our baseball pod from yesterday, do so. It's great that Mike and I got to chat. But uh, Michael Drew said, Kyle Shanahan strikes again. Wow. I am so glad that you brought that up because Blake – it really is shades of Ben Johnson and the Detroit Lions in the third quarter. What happens to that guy after halftime? I don't get it. And it's funny. It's almost like he remembered what the secret sauce was in overtime. Hey, I'm going to give the ball to that 23 guy. And we have this offensive line that is, is going to sweep to the right or sweep to the left. And he's not going to get touched for six yards. It's almost like he forgot yeah. that that was in the playbook. But the Kyle Shanahan second half play calling, like, is is becoming quickly one of the oldest bits in the National Football League. Man, it really is, and I think you saw it again tonight. And it like it was the third quarter too. Like, because I thought he called a great drive to to get them two OT, and I thought he called called a great drive. Like in the first drive of overtime, it's just, you know, the pressure up the middle really screwed the pooch there for them on that play. Cause that was an that was going to be a touchdown. Yeah. Jennings played the game of his life too. Unbelievable. Like, All right. Can I talk about what a degenerate you and Mike are? I, yeah. I, I at some point in time I was gonna bring this up, okay? And I got it wrong, but whatever. Still, you would have won even if it was my way. So for some reason, these two degenerates are, are in a group text with me, and they're speaking Dude, a different language. Wait, I don't wait. get their language. Who started the group chat? 
I kind of did, didn't I? I, I guess I have nobody <laughs> yeah. to blame but myself. But but no, but you guys start speaking your little gambling language and everything. And yeah. and like I'm literally sitting there going, I don't know what you're saying, but Mike was a nice human and said to Blake, Blake, I got a free play on on a prop bet. Is there anything that jumps out to you? And What's you take favorite? the story from there. He said, What's your favorite prop for the Super Bowl? And I said, over two and a half players to complete a pass and it happened it happened early we were sitting pretty and then (laughs) the best part of the night was i every super bowl bet the game will go into ot since betting has become legal i bet it every time because why not the games are always close just happened to go into ot nice plus 950 hit on that i was I had a great evening. Also had the Chiefs on the money line. Also had the under, which hit by a half point. I had a great night. I'm, and it, I think it was a great Super Bowl. Play it again. Uh, somebody said, uh, did Jake Moody really lose that game by missing the extra point? Because if that becomes a narrative, I think that's harsh. I, I don't think somebody's going to play that narrative. I don't, I mean, even anyone. look, you don't, you don't, ever want to miss an extra point but i think when a dude hits from over 50 twice yeah um yeah i i I think amends were made i was talking to my buddy jason carr and during the game and blake it's funny because i think you lomas and i talked about this when we were doing the show together for a lot of you ask yourself what age you are like i'm going to use michael drew as an example okay Blake, not that long ago, even in your life, dudes banging 50-yard field goals was still a big deal. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you when I was a kid, dudes hitting from 47-48 was a big deal. It's just not a big deal anymore. It is unbelievable. And and it's something that I hate to go back to the generational argument. I think old people are dumb. And and why I say that is if you can't understand bigger, stronger, faster now, you aren't paying attention. You're just not paying attention. I mean, the the guys are routinely hitting bombs, 50, 51 yard field goals. You have two guys out there tonight in, in Moody and Butker that, that do it. A 55, no big deal. I, I, it's, it's amazing how that dynamic has changed, which of course makes it even more adem- uh, uh, yeah, amazing that a dude with a half foot hit a 63 yarder to beat the lions low those 59 years ago or whatever the hell it was. Right. <laughs> lion remember lion. how, remember how like much of a mutant Sebastian Janikowski was. Yes. Yes. And now that's just normal. It is. It's absolutely normal. Todd said, I think old people are dumb as drop number two. I Listen, old people are dumb. You know oh, what it is? We're set in our ways. You just said it. I was going to talk, and then you said it again. So it's a clean break. We can pull that audio. Clip it and ship it, Todd. Let's go. With, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I, I saw Otto Graham. That guy is an Otto Graham. Shut the f- <laughs> yeah, forward you. passing. It was around for about three weeks when Otto Graham was slinging it around. I gosh, I hate when people go into that. Yeah, your favorite and trust line me, there is are a lot of train dudes, lane. I know there are a lot of dudes my age that still do that. I'm sorry, I'll take yes. Joe, Joe Montana all day. Based on what? Damn. Like I, I don't give a crap if if. You're the biggest Spartan in the world or Michigan hater in the world. It doesn't matter that he went to Michigan. Proof's in the pudding. Look at the rings, man. Like, knock it off, you know? Uh, yes, Steven, you can come over and eat my meat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Steven, yeah, take the over on old people are dumb. Take it way over. Whatever it is, uh, over. Joe said the body of kickers has changed. There's no doubt about that. Michael Mm -hmm. said, how much do you attribute to the long bomb field goals to field turf and indoor conditions? Way more stadiums like that these days. Oh, it's a huge factor. It is. It is. There's no doubt about that. But, you know, I mean, even even like a guy like Prater, who who really grew up in this era where it seems like, I, I hope I'm not exaggerating, it seems like overnight, 
we went plus five on every kicker in the league. Yeah. All like, you know, when you talk about range, it really roof. does. It seems like overnight. Yeah. All their matting ratings are just through the roof. Yeah. By the way, if we can get to the if we can get to the point where we ban kickers, I'm all for it. I, I just we spent really? way too much time talking about kickers. Can can we just uh, kickers are people too? Well, let them go have a kicker league or something, right? I just I uh, don't punters. like kickers. I hey, I yeah, punted punting is necessary. Punt punter punter is necessary. Punt punter punter oh, is definitely necessary. Okay. Um, kicking isn't necessary. No, go for it. Dan Campbell agrees with me. You know that. Yeah, how'd that work out? Yeah, whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. Chiefs win the Super Bowl 25. What was it? What was the undercovered by what? A half a point? Half point. Yeah, it was Isn't 47 and a half in Isn't a game that, that went to overtime. Usually, Under- overtime means I'm dead. Uh, Brian said, Remember when this city lost their collective minds o- o- over Kick Alicious? I forgot what a drop that is. I forgot about that guy. Do you, do you remember Kick Alicious? Yeah, that was that was what a circus. I had so many people calling into the show, like like going, "Why don't they give this guy a, a shot?" And I'm like, Are, "Seriously?" Like that is, was like is the same. A- it was the same era as uh, Big Joe Fourier, right? I'm pretty sure that guy. He had like what one week of it, good. It, it it was yeah I'd say about thirteen fourteen probably probably in yeah. that area off the top of my head uh, kickers all right can we ban talking kickers like from this point on can we mm-hmm. yeah that's cool. fine the rest of the show yeah that's fine um you know what's interesting the the play call on the McCaffrey touchdown was was exactly like what Michael Drew was talking about earlier. Like the stuff that that Shanahan does, like in the first half versus the second half, is is mind boggling to me. Like not enough is said of it. What a gutsy, fantastic play call that was. Yeah. And, and I mean, let's let's be honest. Jennings hung it up there like a punt because he could. Like who sees that at that point yeah. in time, Blake? Yeah, it, when Kyle is in his bag and like really calling plays. He like he's awesome, but it's just he poops his pants sometimes. That's the only way I can put it. I was trying to think of something smarter to say, but he pooped his pants in the third quarter. Unfortunately, he you know who he reminds me of as a college football nerd. He mm. really reminds me of Steve Sarkeesian. Yeah, good call. Yeah, like he like when he's in his bag and he's rolling and that offense just looks awesome. It's like this is this is the best brand of football I've ever seen. But then when it's bad, it's really, really bad. Uh, Christian McCaffrey's heat is one of the funniest things. I- I'm sorry in football. It-, it is. And I know the X button is overused. But like the second he touched that ball and he just took off like a rocket. Like, don't you almost giggle? It, it, like, honestly, yeah. I find myself just watching it just kind of giggle. Just yeah. like, come on. Are you serious? Yeah, he's. I mean, it, he played an awesome game. I think the Niners played a great game. It's just you played against Patrick Mahomes. McCaffrey, uh, 80 yards rushing, 80 yards receeving. Uh, un- just unbelievable. What did Kelsey finish with? Because he did nothing in the first half. Nine for 93. Nine for 93. He had a pretty good I game. was... St- I was surprised, and I know I texted you. I think anybody that plays fantasy football in particular probably knows this. Um, or if you watch the Chiefs, and Lord knows they're on all the time. Like, Patrick Mahomes fell in love very madly and very deeply with uh, Rasheed Rice. But When mm-hmm. would you say that was, Blake? Maybe three quarters of the way through the season, maybe halfway through the season. I mean, they had a hard love affair and it was amazing to me. Like I had to look at the numbers and as it is, he still had a total of 10 touches. It just didn't see like that. I thought once they got the ball in overtime, like I called my shot and obviously I was wrong, Uh, but I said to Todd and Blake in our, in our text message, I, I was like, 
we haven't seen much of Rasheed Rice. This is like Rasheed Rice time. And mm -hmm. uh, as it was, only six receptions, 39 yards. He did have eight targets, and he had a couple carries for five yards. But um, it's almost boring to talk about. They had Patrick Mahomes and San Francisco didn't. Yeah, that's right. That's that's what we got to. Yeah, like Pacheco didn't have like a crazy stat line or a great night either. Like he obviously played well, but he had the fumble, and that first quarter was so weird. Both of them fumbling. That whole thing Absolutely. was weird. But it, yeah, it's it's Patrick Mahomes. I feel like Nine. we put that on a drop too, Todd. While we're at it. Nine carries uh, for 66 yards, 34 of 46 for 333 yards. So you do the math about 400 yards of offense. And and when he gets the ball late, I, it, to be honest with you, I'm surprised that they didn't score a touchdown late in the game. Were you surprised, Blake, that they um, decided to kick the field goal with six seconds left? I think it's um, the right call, by the way. I do. I, well, I you think know, it's Romo right said call. that if there was one more second, they were going for it. Freaking no, actually, fucking Romo. He's the worst. He that uh, we can talk about this in a couple minutes. I'm sorry, but I hate him. I no, I, I that was it wasn't it wasn't a good showing for for it wasn't a good showing tonight for, for Tony. I don't know, Jim. It's the worst. Do it some more, please. <laughs> there was a okay when they were like sending off the producer at some point in the game, yeah. and he was like, "Yeah, he's the guy that brought me in too, Jim." It's about you, Tony. Oh yeah, let's just steal the shine from that guy. You freaking jackass! And he's talking the whole game about how tired they are. Oh. Tony, I don't know if you know this, and I know you never got this far. They're playing in the Super Bowl. I don't think they're tired. They're just playing hard. Um, Brian said, Romo, fall from grace. I, I admitted it. We talked about it a couple shows ago, Brian. I really liked Tony Romo. I really, really did when he first came out. And he has turned into, I'll, I'll use the same analogy, John Madden, his last 10 years, okay, was an absolute caricature of himself. It doesn't change the fact that he was a legend, okay? I mean, just, just like, listen, you guys know me. I have ripped on senile Pat Summerall for, what, 20 years, okay? That doesn't change the fact that he was a legend, but his last few years weren't real good, okay? And John Madden literally became a caricature of himself. Like the John Madden doll, pull the string, and he goes, boom, dink, butt sweat, you know, all that stuff. It, it really be Tony Romo, in such a short amount of time, became a caricature of himself. All the things that endeared him. I was one of those guys his first year, Blake. You and I didn't really know each other then, but his first year, I was like, this is a breath of fresh air. This is this is pretty cool. I like this guy. That, But then by year two, I was like, uh, I'm hearing all the same stuff over and over. No, he stopped. Uh, he's he stopped making stopped it doing about prep. himself. Yes. He stopped doing prep. He stopped doing the things that people liked at the beginning, like the predicting and all that stuff and like adding a new element to broadcasts. He doesn't do that anymore. And if he does, he's wrong because he doesn't watch film anymore. And if you're if if you don't believe what Michael is saying, you can look this up. Okay, he said, "What color were Summerall's hands? His hands were purple. His his hands were purple. I mean, at the at the end, it, it just they they put a guy in the booth that had no business being in the booth. I mean, it was just it it was bad. It was and and again." Uh, guys, I love John Madden. Who doesn't love John Madden? But like somebody said, Madden was a brand his last 10 years. Yes. He he knew what the brand was. It that to me can be defined by becoming a caricature of your, yourself. He knew what it was. He knew the way people looked at him and it was dink doink butt sweat. You know, oh, look at that guy with the box of popcorn in the stands. Oh, it was just all the same old bit stuff. And that's, boy, Tony Romo's just one big old bit who 
knows that he made a lot of noise. And, and to your point, Blake, Blake um, doesn't go into the booth with maybe the preparation he did the first couple of years he was in the booth. Yes. Yeah. I almost turned on the Nickelodeon broadcast because if I wanted a bit, I would just go to the Nickelodeon broadcast don't say and that. watch no. SpongeBob and Patrick. No, you didn't. No, I, you didn't. I'm not joking. No, I really thought about it. I really did. I can't stand him. And I appreciate it, Gordy. Passionate Blake does add a new layer. I'm he very does. passionate about this. He, 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 Just he, wait he, until college football season hits and I lose a parlay by a leg. You'll really see passionate Blake come out. That's not passionate Blake. That's degenerate Blake. Let's be completely honest. That's that's what that is. <laughs> My gosh. No, it's it's funny because like and no offense to you guys, I don't like I don't really pay attention to the commercials. I just don't like I, I you know what? I like the Uber Eats thing. I thought that was kind of funny. The Dunkin' Donuts one with with Damon and Affleck and Brady that you know, ha ah, ha. I it, Blake, I, my guess is you're kind of the same way that I am. I watch them and ha, ah, but I'm not sitting there ranking what was my favorite commercial or anything like that. If that's if that's what you want to do, you go right ahead. I'm not going to bitch at you or anything like that. But I, I just like this is why people like me, Blake. I have said this for probably 15 years. I love Championship Weekend the most because it's all about the football. Yeah. There isn't about I listen, no offense. I don't give a damn about Usher or Alicia Keys or Lil Wayne John or what I don't I don't hey, I don't care. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't this care guy. about any I don't care. I don't I don't give a crap about any of that stuff, right? <laughs> and everything on Super Bowl Sunday seems to be it's almost like football's a backdrop. You know what I mean? Oh, by the way, there's a football game going on. You yeah. know what I mean? Because everybody's talking about all the other bullshit. Well, especially this game, too, because the first three quarters, there wasn't a lot of football going on. So, Lil Wayne John was did great, by the way. Did you see what Gerald said? I'm happy yeah. for Taylor. She finally caught a break. <laughs> Lil Wayne John, though, man. I liked the halftime, by the way, okay? Usher's got nothing but bangers, first of all. And Alicia Keys... Besides, did you catch she like when she first came on, her voice like cracked or did something, and and now I'm just turning into everything that you just said you hate. But she sounded like hell at the beginning, and then turned it around real quick, and it was great. I, I couldn't imagine. Um, so I've been to a couple Super Bowls, and um, uh, my feeling is the same. I like, I, and if this makes me sound like an old dude, so be it. But you I, hate I just, old people. It, old people are dumb. We've established yeah. that. Um, I, it's just not for me. It's not the time or place. Does that well, like they, honestly? There was an. Did you see there was an in stadium DJ tonight too? Like during commercial breaks, in the stadium, there was just a dude like a DJ. It was awesome. Uh, Michael said was, was was Cole in the puppy bowl? No, he's day to day because somebody kicked him yesterday. So he's 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 day to day. There was an accidental <laughs> oh, no. kicking. There was an accidental kicking in the doorway. It's it's oh, it's no, no. It's, it's no really and truly. He's un indestructible though. <laughs> um, no, but Blake, I would like honestly. So when the Stones were at, um, when the Stones were at Ford Field, when I was at the Super Bowl, I, I kid you not. Like Mark Champion, I was sitting next to Mark Champion. Mark Champion and I just got up and went and got food. I. I so and that's what I do every halftime performance. I'm not joking. Now the one last year, that was the one with like, was it Eminem and Fifty Cent? Last yeah, year, do so. you remember? I think so. I yeah, think the one two it, years ago was really good. The Snoop Dogg and like Dr. Dre, like the whole LA. That thing. was the that one was last cool. year. Yeah, and they brought out Fifty Cent and everybody. You know, he gained yeah. some the last 20 years so yeah. they were calling them like 80 cents and all that yeah, yeah. I, I did catch some of that but like honestly for me the halftime is all right i'm gonna go get some more food that's like that's my halftime and and even in a year like this where i was sitting by myself um you know i 
my tradition is the, the Habs are always on during the day. So I watch that shit show and, and then the Super Bowl's on. Boy, that's two swears for me. Uh, and then the Super Bowl's on. And then at halftime, I, like, it doesn't matter. I, I don't know, just for a football game, I don't have any interest in watching it. It just doesn't do anything for me, man. Steven, uh, I, w- I didn't watch the Super Bowl, but if you tell me Purple Rain in the rain was the greatest moment in Super Bowl history, I'm not going to argue you. That was pretty cool. I've seen the video. It's pretty cool. Uh, Gordy said this old guy agrees with halftime is break time. Thank you. I put dishes away during halftime. I pulled up the show on my iPad, but I was putting dishes away. I had, um, so as you know, I sat by myself, which I'm not joking. It was awesome. (laughs) You probably loved it. I cannot. and, And if my family's watching, okay, I want you all to know I love you. But it was awesome, and I might do this again next year, regardless of where you people are. Yeah. I, I might just, I might decide to do this again. But Blake, I, I had made a rack of ribs, and I actually destroyed that during the hockey game. But I had a bunch of andouille sausage and shrimp left over. You know, I, I do this little, mm-hmm. I don't know, Cajun thing going on, and you know, I was like, well, there's no way in hell I'm going to eat all this. And then it's like, yeah, right. You know, isn't that, isn't that cute how you tell yourself that? Yeah, there's no way in hell I'm going to eat all this. Yeah, right. By the time, you know, halftime rolled around and, you know, Usher runs out there and John Wayne or whatever. What's what's his name? Little Wayne John? What? John Wayne? What? <laughs> By the time all those guys ran out there. Little I, John. Number, his name's number Little one, John. I it was, like all that music reminded me of being at the palace in 2004. I was like. I'm waiting to hear the going to work. You see whistle, him on the right? roller skates. It was awesome. The roller skates was no, cool. I it I it was very it. cool. And I, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good halftime. Uh, Brian said, uh, get off my lawn. You kids. I actually want football in my Super Bowl. Just say no to all the non-football stuff. Yeah. Sorry. I'm just like, no offense to anybody. Like I get it. I get a lot of people get into the commercials and the halftime and stuff. I mean, I'm not, like if that's what you're into, great. But I, it's just like for me, I it's time to go get something to eat, or most importantly, probably time to clear some space. If I can clear some space and then We're go grab something, to... we are, we are not going down this road. Tell okay? me, tell me. Uh, Steve said smoked turkey is good stuff. It's great stuff. Blake, have you ever been over for the smoked turkey that I make? I don't think so. Yeah, I, I make a smoked Cajun turkey, and now my family, they don't like it any other way. Like, they're like, please make that. So that's, like, that's become our Thanksgiving turkey. I cannot believe we've sat here and bullshitted for 37 What do What do I have to do to get you to do some sort of meat event for uh, first weekend of March Madness? Okay, so let me tell you this. I was actually talking with Todd, and we're, we're trying to work out a couple things. How's that? Um, okay. We could do a we could do a low key thing at my house. I mean, you know. Yes. Yeah. Just yeah. Okay. We could, but yeah. I'd like to do something like with the show though, and, yeah. and the only way I can do it, and I will do it, is if it's like the first few meetas, not when Mita went like all corporate and everything was sponsored. Like, no, this is just like, you know, my, Gordy's in the chat. Gordy brings over, you know, 10 pounds of like this Italian sausage he thinks is the best and he grills it. And you bring over stuff. And, you know, obviously I have a, you've been in my house. I have a freezer full of stuff and it, it's got to be, it's got to be like homegrown and, you know, grassroots type of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Elizabeth said it's called a barbecue, Blake. Yeah. No, I thank you. Thank you to my sister. Did you see what Michael Drew said? You're the best, Mike. <laughs> There's that is just a great bit. Uh, Dan said the moment Travis Kelsey went off on Andy Reid, I lost all respect of the little respect I had uh, left for him. Oh wait, that's right, he lost the rest of it by butchering the greatest of the Beastie Boys. They should be getting royalty every time he is on the award stand. Um, yeah, yeah, We're, I was uh, I was a little surprised at that. Um, it's one thing. You can get into an argument and discussion. The bump was where you lost me. It was, yeah, it was a little we, weird. We, we were talking about it in text, and the bump is where you lost me. 
Um, Brian said, Sean, the fact that Mita went corporate just showed how glorious of an idea it was. Thank you. But I always say this, if somebody, I'm going to use my buddy, Andy Gennetti as an example, shout out to Andy in Northville. Uh, Pete Janopoulos is another guy who did this. These guys brought over like 20 pounds of Italian sausage and like 20 pounds of, of their ribs. And you have these people, these suits that are trying to charge them for donating food. Yeah, it doesn't the math? Doesn't I want mean. you to think about that, okay? Yeah, dudes bringing like twenty pounds of his sausage and handing out free sausage to people, okay? Yeah. And yeah. and the other dude literally has a rib truck out there that is mass producing like racks of ribs, right? Just, just churning them, churning them out. And you have our sales staff saying, yeah, well, if we do this next year, we're, we're going to have to charge you like $1,500. I'm giving free food out to people. What, what are you talking about? So that was the only thing. And I get it. I say it all the time. Like the sales staff, I get it. You have a job to do. That was not the time or place. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That just wasn't that wasn't the time or place. But we're trying to work on something. I think, Blake, you're kind of aware of it. But I, I don't want to say anything just in case it doesn't come to fruition. Mm -hmm. But, yes, I, I'll do a barbecue. And, and Gordy, you're invited. Michael Drew, you're invited. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll we'll auction off a few spots. Come hang out at Sean's house and eat his meat. That sounds like a great promotion, doesn't it? Todd, That's play it. it. Todd, hurry up. Play the sound. I don't know where it is. Play it. You'll find it. Oh, right. I found it. Yes, you can come over and eat my meat. Yes, you yeah. can come over and eat my meat. Yes, you can come over and eat my meat. Yes, you can come over and eat my meat. <laughs> I didn't know it was on loop. Um, Just see... Uh, I saw in the chat too. Brian said uh, about Kittle that he looked like a homeless guy. I'm a very pro Kittle guy. I've seen a lot of interviews with him and everything. I'm a very much a pro Kittle guy. So that's just his swag. He's from Iowa. You know, you can't really blame him. Whatever. I respect it. You know me, dude. That's like, like, you know, this is about as cleaned up as you're going to find me. So I can, I, I can respect that all day. Yeah. All right. We, dude, listen, we got to go in a couple minutes. We, we, we went longer than we said we would. Uh, final thoughts. Uh, Patrick Mahomes. That's really all I got. Brian, you bring up a good point though. He said, is it me or is that guy falling off a little? I thought that kiddo would be the next great tight end. Not that long ago. Remember when he had that streak? What was that? 19 where it just seemed like every week he was blowing people up a la yep. Tony Gonzalez, a la Antonio Gates, um, a la Travis Kelsey. I, I agree with your point. He's still a tremendous weapon, but you don't, I don't know, Blake, I don't put him in the upper echelon anymore. I just don't. His He's the best blocking tight end in the NFL, I think. Sure. Um, but yeah, I think there's a, this just got brought up in the chat. There's a guy in Detroit that I'd rather have. 100%. Which is I'll crazy. Take, I'll take Laporta. But yeah. Well, you're in now. See, that's what happens when you're in. You're becoming a homer now, right? I, suddenly you're becoming a I homer. thought we were on a year-to-year -year contract with that. How dare you? How dare you? How, how the... F how dare you? <laughs> Holy crap. All right. Uh, listen, I had to. We uh, this is this is funny because I always make fun of people, right? When uh, when the NFL draft happens, and you and I are going to talk about the draft, and we have so many plans. Thanks to our friend from uh, the Detroit Sports Commission for for being a part of this. We're going to be talking draft with them and draft. I always laugh at people when you play the schedule game, like when the schedule is announced, because there's so much that we don't know about the teams, but it's fun to do anyway. And every year, the NFL growing up for a guy like me, you knew exactly who was going to be good and exactly who was going to suck. Okay. And mm -hmm. the NFL's not like that anymore. There, there always seems to be a, at least a couple of surprises, but right now I'm going to ask you with your newfound lion fandom, where do you think the lions finish next year? 
In the NFC? Yeah. Two or three. Okay. I think that's fair. Yeah. I'm not I, ready. I'm not ready to give them the one yet. I'm with you. No. I'm not ready to San say, Francisco. oh, they're gonna be the team to beat. I's not ready to say that. No, San Francisco's still gonna be very, very good, if not better. I have a feeling that Philadelphia steps back up too. That's a good team that something happened this year, Matt Patricia, and um everything not, kind of fell apart. Uh not you don't like that. you don't like Philly? Uh not with Sirianni. Jack. I like Philly. I I like Philly a lot, especially when you consider they play in the same division as the Dallas Cowboys, who are just waiting to do something Dallas. They are. Let's let's be honest. They're just waiting to do something uh, Dallas. All right, we got to get out of here. Uh, appreciate you guys for joining us. I Blake, I'll tell you what. I want to go to bed. Like, yeah, honestly, it was very fun, though. I'm happy we did this. I'm- no, I'm glad we did it. Thanks for chatting. We have so much crap coming up just because football season's over. Um, we're, we have the hockey shows. We have the draft shows. We have regular shows. Uh, yes, we even want to do some barbecue shows. I think I'm going to live stream one of our barbecues. Um, I don't know what that was. That scared the sh- shite out of me. What was that? <laughs> um we we have we have uh a a lot of stuff coming up honestly i i think for whatever reason people really enjoy when we have the big barbecues and take the pictures and everything i think we'll even live stream one of those because um blake you know this like the the crap that barbecue mike and i do um it, cool. It's ours. It, no, it is. It's ours, but it's fun. Like it's, it's, you're sitting downstairs with your friend, just smoking a piece of meat for. I didn't even meat. do that on purpose. Yes. You can but, come over and eat my meat. Yes. Yes. that You can do that too. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of stuff planned. Uh, don't fret about that. Thank you for being a part of this. Uh, Blake, you know, before I get out of here, I, I, especially I said this, if you come on early with us, we want to do reads uh, for you all the time. Like seriously, um, you know, you're supposed to like in the, in the quote unquote business, uh, you are supposed to, um, schedule them. I, I said from day one, if anybody comes on with us early before we showed that people will actually want to listen to this, and I still don't believe that anybody would waste their time listening to this bull crap, um, can we talk a little bit first about our friends from the Wealth Advantage Group? Yeah, I'd love to. All right. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? Well, look no further than the Wealth Advantage Group, located in historic downtown Northville, owned by two brothers, those guys right there. There's Mike on the left, Jeff on the right. They have over 20 years of industry experience. They understand that your financial goals are as unique as you are, and that's why they offer personalized expert guidance to help you navigate the complexities of financial planning. Whether you are saving for retirement, getting ready to sell your company, or already in retirement, they can help guide you through every step of your financial journey, as they have done for me. They work with clients throughout all stages of life and have clients in over 20 states. The investment world is complex. And if you are ready to start taking your finances more seriously, it might be time to work with the experts. Reach out to the Wealth Advantage Group at 248-773-8574 or view their website at www.thewealthadv. Dot com. Can't thank my friends enough. And I'm serious when I say this. I wouldn't tell you to go to somebody in- unless I, I buy into them. Uh, great guys, please tell them that I sent you some new friends as well. Uh, got a chance to meet these guys. Go out. I say this on the hockey show all the time. They're hockey guys. If that doesn't tell you the content of their character, I don't think anything will really appreciate uh, getting to know Joe and Alex and Dave, our friends from Legacy 
partners. And uh, certainly before we get out of here, I want to talk about them. Did you know that thousands of Metro Detroiters have already called Legacy Partners to get help with their home and auto insurance? Our friends at Legacy Partners are one of Southeast Michigan's top independent insurance agents, and they provide a full service, one-stop solution for all of your insurance needs, personal and business, large or small. Legacy has helped our listeners by fixing mistakes other agents have made, asking the right questions to get the right coverage put in place to properly protect you. And oh, yeah, helping you save some money at the same time. Chances are, if you haven't checked your policy in the last year, you're probably paying too much and you could be underinsured as well. What are you waiting for? Give Legacy Partners a chance to help you with your home, your cars, life insurance, Medicare enrollment, or business insurance needs, call them today at 586-209-4106 or visit LegacyPartnersINS.com to get started with your new quotes. Great guys, Legacy Partners. And again, please, if you enjoy the stuff that we do, support those who support us. Really Really appreciate it. Steve said, still want to get this YouTube Michigan uh, needs more people in the state promoting Michigan. Yeah, it'd be fun to do something like that. We have to figure out our YouTube page. Do they still think it, that I'm not me? Blake, is that what it is? They, Yeah. How can I prove I'm Sean? No, look, like, really, this is, it's me. You, you have to send them a inappropriate picture and we'll get it taken care of. No problem. No. Some might say that tattoo on my right calf is an inappropriate picture all right blake final thoughts before we get out of here patrick mahomes and i hate tony romo that's basically it that's my takeaways from the game patrick mahomes and i hate tony romo don't say you? we didn't tell you don't say we, this is my final thought don't say we didn't tell you how it was going to end patrick mahomes was going to have the ball patrick mahomes is going to find a way to win the game he is we told you that i love that that's a good quote all right for blake i'm sean uh we'll talk to you soon here on off the air off the Air with Sean Belegian, featuring Sean Belegian and Blake Matrizak. Produced by Todd Losey and Blake Matrizak. Executive produced by Sean Belegian and Todd Losey. Theme song, incidental music, and related sound effects are from Play It Loud by Jam Studio. Engineering, mixing, and graphic design support provided by the Unsyndicated Podcast team. Don't forget to like and subscribe to off the air with Sean Belegian on all your favorite channels. While you're there, be sure to rate and review the podcast. Got something to say to Sean? Call the unsyndicated hotline at 248-237-3257.